When going overseas for employment as a foreign national, a dual language contract may not be what you think it is. I'm going to tell you what you need to be aware of when signing a contract to work abroad. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. Welcome to Four Seas One Family, where expats, immigrants, and migrants can share and learn about life experiences abroad. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so, so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. There are many reasons why people decide to explore life overseas in new environments and cultures among people who may not at first appear to have anything in common with them. Sometimes the decision simply has to do with the desire to explore the world and obtain new experiences in other cultures. For others, life in their home nation has become too challenging, constricting, predictable, or simply not intellectually or socially engaging. Because of the reasons like these and many more, like-minded individuals have decided to look outside of their familiar life existence to explore environments that could reignite their dreams and curiosities. So when people like these are in the middle of a life interim, they look abroad for opportunities to not just simply live their lives, but also build and invest in financial and social security. Now, this is why and when some people look abroad for employment. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Life for many in their home nation is limited or hasn't provided many opportunities. Therefore, working overseas allows them to earn sometimes an even higher income so they can send money back home to their family. And in a few cases, the decision has to do with following a dream of building a family abroad. Now, no matter what the reasons are, when someone has decided to work abroad, they must spend the extra time to learn as much as they can about the targeted nation they are looking to find employment in. Now, when looking for employment overseas, a foreign national has to stay vigilant upon entering any contractual agreements. A foreign national should look for and obtain a document, an official document, either directly or from a government's website that contains information regarding regulations for hiring foreign nationals. Simple as that. Now, this document should also state clearly the rights and obligations of foreign workers and local employers, along with any penalties that are given for breaking contractual agreements, uh, litigate, litigation, dispute, or um, arbitration. Now, many governments have provisions that allow foreign nationals to be employed in professions that do not uh, place the employment of local nationals at risk. Some provisions open the doors for employment for foreign nationals in research, education, medical care, and uh, manufacturing. Now, in almost all cases, and depending on the profession, the governments require that foreign nationals submit documents that proves his or her education level, health conditions, and in some situations, a document that the foreign national isn't wanted for any crimes in their home nation. Now, once again, any contractual agreement, of course, must state clearly the legal obligations and rights of both employee and employer in the particular country. Now, this includes the description of job assignments, responsibilities, and the guidelines both sides have to meet, of course. Now, the job description should be listed along with a written document or official contract. Now, this is perfectly normal and should be expected. But the purpose of a contract is to express clearly the roles and responsibilities of all parties involved and any legal responsibilities the parties involved have in their particular situation. Now, a contract should make all parties involved feel at ease upon signing their agreement. But, however, there is one particular type of contract a foreign national should be weary of agreeing to and signing. 
Dual language contracts are the most common a foreign national will encounter upon agreeing to employment. However, most dual language contracts do not favor a foreign national's employment position. And this is especially the case in nations that only regard contracts written in the national or local language as legal and binding. So if any disputes or litigation arises, the court in this particular nation will most likely make a decision based on the content of the contract written in the local or national language. So a foreign national could be at risk at losing benefits orally agreed upon to any agreement stated or denied in a contract that was written in the language that holds priority in the host nation. In most cases, contract translations are done by the employer or local company. And if the employer or local company is dishonest or have uh, hidden motives, the employer or company could make the translated version sound attractive and appealing to the foreign national but at the same time, construct it in a way that makes the section in the local or national language more beneficial to the employee or company. And that sucks, really sucks. So be aware that not all contract translations are created equally or even fairly. The reality is, in many situations, the content of a dual language contract may not transfer directly or equally the meanings or connotations of the terms and expressions used across each language. Now, this is where the term loss in translation can become more than just a humorous outlet. Now, it could result in serious, unrecoverable misunderstandings that could make a foreign national susceptible to fines, detention, and even deportation. What can someone who is looking for employment overseas do to lower the risk of getting involved in a bad or unfair dual language contract? One thing they can do is have someone they trust who can read and understand the local language review the contract or hire a law firm to assist them. The absolute best thing they can do is have a contract in the local language drafted and reviewed on their behalf by a trusted party. Now, if they are unable or not allowed to have a dual language contract reviewed by a trusted third party, run away, run away, and run away. And don't look back. Now, foreign nationals who only represent themselves aren't the only ones who have to be aware of this situation. Large companies that sign dual language contracts also have to face this fact. In nations that only regard a contract written in the local or national language as valid or legally binding. This situation also puts foreign companies, big foreign companies, at risk because they can be legally denied privileges given to any party that is from the nation the contract was signed in. Now look guys, I've seen people who wanted to teach English in Asia get burnt People working on OEM manufacturing projects uh, get stiffed and even film companies trying to develop project cooperations get blacklisted. Now, there are too many examples that make this a point that shouldn't be ignored. Now, even in a few dual language contracts, I personally was required to sign. I found the translations didn't accurately or explicitly represent what was stated in my mother language version, which was written in English. On a few occasions, I had to request that something be changed or updated to something that c correctly represented or more accurately translated the, the English version. And luckily, on each occasion, my request was granted very quickly without any hassles. And I honestly feel that in these situations, the other party may not have been aware of exactly what the English part of the contract said and just assumed, like many other people, that both language sections represented the same exact things. For me, and because I was able to interpret information expressed in the local language, I was able to avoid conflicts that may have taken place in the future. However, for foreign nationals who aren't aware of this type of occurrence, a lot of tensions could develop 
which may later lead to not only confrontation and debates, but also massive financial losses. My questions to you today are, if you are a foreign national working abroad and have signed a dual language contract, how would you describe your contractual agreements? Do you feel they are a warfare? If you find or found a discrepancy in your contract, how will you or how did you handle the situation? Were your conditions accepted or denied and for what reasons? And if you are planning to work overseas, what contractual issues would you be concerned about the most? Please leave a message below if you have anything you would like to ask, say, or share concerning this topic. And if you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the share and bell buttons below to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to take care wherever you are in the world.